What is up, down and sideways, you lovely individuals? You best believe it's another round of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you guys. Week 7, we roll into some more global power rankings. Everybody but the LEC having games that we can actually grade and overreact to for a lot of these squads. And this is the week of LPL Dark Horses charging forward on this list. LPL Dark Horses charging forward, creating uh, an avalanche of slides alongside them towards that bottom territory. Don't forget, maybe a little bit of LCK fight back as well, pushing in up these rankings in the global situation. The one uh, Dark Horse LPL squad just outside of this list is anyone's legend who had the big upset against NIP. Uh, still... Not confident enough that we feel that this is actually a solid team in the LPL. A good middle-tier team, but hovering on that top 20, uh, maybe right behind. They're pulling on the shorts of 100 Thieves now who have dropped down to that 20 spot. And after the way the past weekend went for 100 Thieves, this is expected kind of more so... Uh, you know, finding that ground on where they're going to sit, because I think that right now, top 20 in the world is quite an, uh, a jump up from where the expectations were and should be for this lineup. Holding strong in that spot at this point, just clinging into it. Enough signs from these good players, from players like River, like Quid in the mid lane, and the, and the growth that we have seen from him specifically, that you can roll with 100 Thieves here. Again, riding the high of Cloud9 taking down FlyQuest is why C9 is back on this list. Of course, they were here the first couple of weeks. Then they had that Omega slump for a couple of weeks, which knocked them out, but they're back, pushing over 100 Thieves, at least for now. Yeah, and I think when you're looking at what went better, what went right for this Cloud9 team this past week to lead you to want to be building up, again, looking at those wins that are, are stacking up again now and put them your faith back in to a cloud nine in the top 20 in the world is one of these situations i'm looking at someone like berserker stepping up and kind of re-establishing that okay maybe i wasn't the top adc for the first part of this lcs split there's no mistaking i'm gonna be the best adc this second half around and right before playoffs especially when smolder drops and he says oh is that is that the new zeri dropping in okay <laughs> let me pilot that guy yeah, pretty, pretty nice to get a champion like that against taking advantage pretty quickly of the LCS, having those live patch situations. Always good to see players quickly adapting, getting on that new power and finding success. Kwangdong, another week they drop a little. They they at least stopped this losing streak by getting a win against Nongshim, but needed three games against the bottom feeder in the lck i'm not i'm not selling my stock on kuang dong yet if anything now's the time to buy low guys now is the time to buy low because i think what we're seeing with this kuang dong freaks journey and where the you know progression was going to be this year some people maybe had hoped and maybe bought in after the early success that it was going to be just like that we're going to be rising to the top we're learning of course like success in so many other aspects of life not linear. It's going to be all loop-de-loop -loop all over the place backwards at times and, and squiggly. But this Kwang Dong Freaks team showing enough stabilization this week with that victory that you can't keep them in this type of spot. What I want to see moving forward, my man Bulldog. I need him popping off. He is the big engine, the big heart that drives what is possible for this team. I think he needs to step back up. Yeah, and we haven't really seen him be that featured guy as much since Bull came into the lineup. You know, you can only have so many bulls on one squad you got to share share the load a little bit so yeah expected him to kind of level up as we get closer to playoffs uh world elite stand put in that 16 spot they got 2-0'd by blg but they were close and competitive in both of those they've taken a game off of jdg so plenty to still feel good about for world elite for world elite it really is just checking how they've stacked up against these top teams in the opl because unlike a uh, situation like anyone's legends where you're really searching through and yes you've got a decent enough record you're not finding those mega marquee type of wins or being challenged in challenging those teams in those type of series where i think we has got that check mark as far as where they are in the dark horse they're they're not necessarily out of that label quite yet i think we've had a, a one or two lpl squads shed that label and fully become contenders in, in the playoff situation right now we barely holding on to that dark horse Ahead of them, you got this this trio of two EU squads and one NA in Mad Lions, Koi, 
FlyQuest and Fnatic, they all get bumped down a couple spots as there's an adjustment from some surging squads ahead of them. Obviously, Fly is the only team who actually played this week. They get smashed by Cloud9, but then they smash 100 Thieves. So despite getting dropped a couple of spots, still feeling pretty good about FlyQuest. Yeah, and I think that this has been the where you find yourself about this FlyQuest experiment that was going to be this year. You've had almost, you had very little concerns, I think, a lot of people about Bwipo and Inspired in that top side, and you've been proven that you didn't have to have any concerns about them because they have been those players that they've established their careers upon. You might be had a little bit more concern for Jensen in the mid lane, thinking that, okay, maybe he'll just be middling level of performance, and that's not what this FlyQuest team needs to challenge at that top level. He's been more than good enough. He's been closer to those shades of the C9 Jensen, the Jensen that's gone to Worlds so many times. That's what we're seeing from him in the mid lane. And that bottom lane, it's got the talent. It's got the potential. We just need to see it come all together with everything working for this FlyQuest team. And if that goes right, you're going to see FlyQuest not only holding on to this spot in the rankings, but making a couple of leaps up. And obviously going to be right there with Cloud9 in terms of world's contenders probably throughout the majority of the year in terms of what teams people are expecting to represent internationally out of North America. Those two EU squads uh, sandwiched outside of FlyQuest. You might be saying, we did the LEC rankings and Fnatic was ahead of Mad Lions. But there's there's a slightly different approach you take when you're doing the preseason rankings for the LEC split as a whole and global rankings we're still carrying over the last games that we saw, which was obviously MDK taking the win off of Fnatic. But no question for me, these two squads are going to be going back and forth for who's number two in EU throughout spring. I, to me, I'm sure if you're a fan of one of these teams, you, you've got a little bit something more on the line to care about where they're ranked on top of one of another in a situation like that. For me, I don't care. Because right now, having them in this spot, what we've got ahead of us, it's the excitement for the potential of this of this next split ahead of you for these two teams. Fnatic, we've already seen. Razork, Humanoid, this is looking like a good year from those two star players for this team. You got Oscarin making progression in the top lane, and you're looking now at the bottom lane to find their footing, find their ground, find that chemistry to start pushing this team to the next level. Mad Lions, Koi, you've already seen that excitement, that hype of energy that you've gotten with these young players and El Yoya shepherding them along. Now it's all about reaping some of the rewards for the hard work in that winter split. You're going to start to see the experience, that comfort factor start to rise up for this Mad Lions Koya team. And I'm betting that that's going to relate to a couple of more exciting games out on the Rift. And I'm ready to see Mirwin become maybe the best, at least most exciting top laner in the LEC. He kind of already had that title in winter. But the growth from him, he has been a legitimate threat even when he was going up against G2. He's styling on G2 with the Yasuo top lane. So I'm very excited to see this guy's growth in particular in spring. Then we get to the two completely different trajectories in the LCK. It's like they... Past two ships in the night, KT, Rolster, and D+. Obviously, a huge climb for D+, Kia, who have now won five in a row. KT continues to slide amidst their losing streak. And I know their series was a little bit sore on the eyes at times, but it's D+, who comes away with it and have shown that they have absolutely turned a corner the last couple weeks. Right, and it's going to be important to keep expectations, keep hype to an understandable level in the LCK. Of course, when you've got Giga Titans roaming around that we'll talk about later in the region, you got to you gotta make sure the scale is right when we're talking about the power a D plus Kia has represented and where they are passing by a team like KT Rolls for going the opposite direction. I don't know what it is with KT Rolster, whether it still struggles trying to maybe establish what the communication, what the shot calling order is going to be and following those commands because, you know, well, that order is going to be more or less from Barrel down in the bottom lane is this where that's coming from. Whether it's just raw individual performance, lacking behind and slumping down the confidence levels. Players like Piosik, like Def, we know are big time players that need that confidence to be at that top level, to be on that edge of performance is something I'm looking for. And I've already talked about before when we've mentioned this KT struggle, BDD. He is someone that needs to step up. We've got so many great mid laners in the LCK and historically he's been one of them, not this split. And it needs to change for KT Rolster. Maybe they just saw, you know, guys, we started off too well. We got to get that DRX angle and really be that underdog where nobody's expecting anything. That's where the three fifths 
of that core thrive. I'm going to promise you that's not going to work this time around in the LCK. What we have seen from a defending world champion and a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back domestic champion, I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, you're going to need about uh, six tiers of level up if you want to be competing again with Gen G and T1. Roll into that top 10 side of things and uh, just barely hold it on. They're not doing a great job of denying those fraud allegations. NIP, drop a couple of series in a row, and now a surging D+. They're kind of hovering over NIP, and we really got to wait and see if they show up big in their next series. It's like being at the carnival and, you know, you've got the, the game in front of you. You're playing, you're trying to, you know, throw the ring onto the bottle, whatever type of game you're playing. Buddy keeps tapping you on the shoulder. Are you done yet? Is it my turn? Is it my turn? That that's kind of feels exactly how D plus Kia is looking at a team like NIP. Uh, very much so some struggles this past week and what you're looking at in these games. I think the, the one against anyone legend maybe a little bit more uh, stomachable but what you're seeing from this team and then now you're realizing is those questions whether this is a contender for the top level in the lpl or maybe this is just someone that shows up as a dark horse is where we're trying to maybe reevaluate a team like nip and uh yeah i mean rookie continues to have a great game a rough game a great game a rough game he goes very uh back and forth and as a whole the macro is not great for this squad and we know that's not necessarily been a strong suit of rookie in particular over his uh, you know, decade plus long career he's had a lot of other leaders in terms of the actual game communication over the years so we'll see if that's something nip can sort out but right now they're definitely hovering between that legit not so legit status and all of a sudden a squad like ig is looking Pretty damn legit. Okay, it took three games against EDG, but they smashed them in the third game. And they also had a competitive at least two games against top esports earlier in the week, which, as we know, one of the best teams in the LPL right now. And, you know, ninjas in pajamas need to take lessons because this is not where you stall out in the race. You got to be putting everything in to keeping up pace with everybody at this point. And they're on lap two if it's Mario Kart. They haven't even uh -oh. dinged final lap and they're slowing down. And right in front of them is IG, and IG's picking up that item. And oh, baby, it's going to be a it's bad banana right in front of NIP. <laughs> That's the way it goes. But you know, you look at it ahead of yourselves. IG, Leanne leading the charge in the jungle for what we have seen from, from this team. And then you go to FPX, and you're talking about Milky Ways in the jungle. Best making player some... on the planet, on the galaxy right now. I, I, I mean, I don't know if we're going to go that far, but we'll go quite a, uh, instantly and say, the hottest player on the planet right now is Milky Ways and the way that things are going for FPX. Both IG and FPX were, would have been teams that you didn't have in the playoff picture to start out the year, or maybe very barely in that dark horse type of label. Both of them blazing past anything like that right now, finding themselves right into the contender status of the LPL. And I think FPX more so than some of these other dark horse squads is the most surprising one because I don't, I think Milky Way, you know, we had a bit of hype for sure. He dominated the challenger scene, but I don't think anyone was expecting a squad that had Doc Dom and Life as the bot lane to be coming in and start, maybe not annihilating, but beating some of the best teams. And their the overall macro for this team is maybe the most surprising. Guys that were, you know, falling out of favor in the LCK, getting it done against the elite type of level of, of ADCs and bot lanes that you got in the LPL, yeah, that was unexpected for FPX getting that success with Doc Dom and Life in the bottom lane. Milky Ways, unexpected. This is an FPX team. Going to have to be paying attention to. Going to have to be preparing for. If you are one of these elite squads in the LPL, ringing that alarm, guys. You can't be taking it as an easy lunch. Ahead of them, Hanwha Life. Been cruising against most of the LCK. They're feeling pretty good. Chest puffed out. They go up to the VIP door. Knock confidently on it. We're saying we're ready for top five. And Genji swiftly answers the door, kicks them in the head, and slams the door in their face. Oh, no. 
and their, their drink spills on themselves <laughs> as they fall backwards. It was a rough one for Hanwha Life. A very clean and concise victory from Gen G today, uh, taking care of Hanwha Life. This has been a Hanwha Life that has risen up. We have seen Zeka start to perform much more like the Zeka that won the World Championship. We have seen the additions from Gen G, of course, Doran, Peanut, uh, you know, Delight Fine success for this team. Viper is looking lethal. This was the Hanwha life that had built up, had provided enough of a runway. You said you're ready for this challenge of the top. Can you knock down the established order of the LCK? And the answer from Trovi was a unanimous no. You're not doing that, no <laughs> chance. And even Keen jumps in to say not a chance. Yeah, Keen had clean team fighting across both of these games. Chovy, I'm convinced, is still furious and has a vendetta against Zeka from 2022, losing to him at the World Championship. And uh, yeah, this was clearly Hanma Life not ready. I mean, across the board, that was maybe the weakest Rakan performance we've seen from Delight ever. I mean, he got stunned seeing Pays, but man, just the, the, the memories of the past. That's what it had to have been type of situation. It, it's crazy because this was as good as Hanma Life could shape themselves up before a matchup against either. It would have been a Gen G or a T1 at the top of the table here of the LCK. And to get very thoroughly pushed back is one of the things that we're keeping track of because we were looking at it. Hanwha Life, they pushed themselves ahead of everybody else in the LCK to be the ones that knock at the door of the house of the defending champions, of the defending world champions, and they got denied. Top five action. These guys are through the door. They're looking at Hanwha Life on the ground with the pool of their drink around them, and it's JDG who's actually getting overtaken by top esports and i mean it's a recurring theme now tes looks a lot cleaner in their wins even against some of the middle to bottom tier teams in the lpl the only two stats you need to look at despite having one more series loss overall tes has less losses than jdg because they're not going to game threes all the time and the most egregious one is the game time JDG, I know we've talked about this, almost 36 minutes, the slowest game time in the league. Top Esports are a full seven and a half minutes faster on the Rift at just over 28 minutes and 30 seconds. When they get a lead, it's over. Well, I mean, it's pretty simple to, to make the equation of, well, 369 is on top esports. Flandre over over to JDG and Jack out over to over to JDG. That that's that's quite a lot of slowdown compared to the likes of what top esports has gained with 369 up there uh, for the team cream in the mid lane. This has been what you wanted to see from a team like top esports contend at the top level of the LPL and provide that type of firepower that we know these top teams in the LPL are capable of providing. That type of pace, that type of lethality. Top Esports got it. I I was told Mako's washed up coming into this year after 2023. He's supposed to be no good anymore. All of a sudden, him and Jackie Love look like one of the best bot lanes in the LPL. I mean, well, playing beside Jackie Love must be like having like seven Red Bulls in one go <laughs> has been how this is for Mako. Going from the ADCs and the p situations that he has been in, thrown into the fire of top esports. And yes, this veteran proven still plenty in the tank, plenty to offer as one of the top options in the LPL. The other swap on this list, Genji retakes that two spot from BLG. BLG, they 2 0 World Elite, but as I mentioned, it was competitive back and forth. But this is more rewarding Gen G for just how dominant they looked against Hanwha. Yeah, this is this is giving that reassurance to Gen G that you have really gone out. You have dismantled the challenger and you have solidified that you are one of these top elite options containing this one. You were safe for quite a little bit. That's how you feel about what Gen G has accomplished this week, giving them the, the rewards. We talked about Chovy, the way that he looks like a different beast compared to any other type of matchup we get from him against someone like Zeka. I think you're looking at Kane, the way that he stepped up and dismantled and put down someone like Doran in the top side is another big advantage for this Gen G team as our eyes start to shift towards those LCK playoffs for them. Yeah, they're the classic similar to T1. You look at the state of the game and you go, how, 
the hell does Genji have a 3K gold lead? It, it doesn't even make sense. You look at the laning, the numbers, it doesn't add up, but somehow they do it time and time again. A couple of times you saw that here against Hanwha Life, but we're still feeling great about BLG. Obviously, top dogs in the LPL could go toe to toe, I think, with these top two squads in the LCK, but probably the main reason we're putting Genji 2 now is to build up hype for the ultimate showdown over the weekend. T1 still has the Kwangdong freaks before they match up for the heavyweight tilt against Gen G on Saturday. I gotta tell you, man, uh, I don't know if this is number one T1 with owner in the lineup or if this is number one T1 with Guan in the lineup rolling on the Viego with the rest of the members. Or maybe we're talking about Pentakill Tom Kent. <laughs> Mr. Kiria getting it done. What another week in the Chronicles that is the defending world champions in T1. Of course, owner and the, and the sickness kind of going on through important to keep track of. Make sure we get our health all the way back up for this important Gen G series. But you're right. This is where it, it's all leading up down to the mega slam down. The only loss T1 has had this whole year. Gen G, the very beginning. Time to do it again. Let's go. And and this is it. This is the angle. If, if T1 wins this game, they're sitting number one for the rest of the split, probably. Yeah, that's the only way you're looking at this one. And especially given the what has happened in these last couple of weeks, of course, T1 having a you know, replacement angle and still showing us all the way through Pentakill from Karia down to the bottom lane that it is the defending champions, T1. And here comes Gen G saying, oh no, we got another challenger in the LCK. Uh-uh, there's only two challengers in the LCK. It's us and T1. Let's get down to business. And you know, historically, it's Gen G, the last two plus years that have been dominating uh, this Titanic LCK matchup. And uh, we'll drop a reference here. If you're Guwan, this is like Singles Inferno. He's in Inferno when he's on this Challenger squad. And then he gets to go to Paradise with the T1 starters. And it's like, man, this is great. And like, ah, sorry, you got to go back now. Yeah, you got to uh, enjoy the, the situation T1 Challengers is in right now for the miracle chance Both run. Both Gen G and T1 sitting near the bottom of Challengers, by the way. It goes. The price for success at <laughs> top, my man. I think they're very happy to make that change, are the teams. Yes, yes. I think anyone is going to be with that one. But, man, cannot wait for this Titanic showdown between these two. Anytime we set up for one of these matchups, we're always kind of building up T1. There's always another angle because again, they've been the ones that have been losing recently. So we've always tried to look at that power. When is it gonna reach that tipping point that finally, you know, you're just building up that hype only for Gen G to smack you back down. Eventually it's gonna go the other way. And we're gonna get that big T1 victory. They always deliver these matchups at the very <laughs> list, regardless of who wins. But that's it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. Thanks for hanging out and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.